In the last video, we discussed the precision of measurements and learned about the rules to follow when doing addition and subtraction calculations with measured quantities. Now we'll look at the rules to follow when we do calculations with multiplication or division. We want to find the speed of this car. Because speed is equal to distance over time, we measured out the values of each of these. The car is traveling a total of 26.775 meters. How many significant figures are in this distance? All of these digits are significant, so we have a total of five significant figures. We also measured the amount of time it takes the car to go the 26.775 meters, 7.32 seconds. How many significant figures are in this value? Knowing the distance it traveled and the amount of time it took, we can now calculate the speed of the car. We already said that the speed is equal to distance over time. Let's plug in our given information to this equation. For multiplication and division, we express our final answer using the same number of significant figures as the value with the least number of significant figures. Taking this into account, what is the speed of the car? The value with the smallest number of significant figures is our given time, which means that our final answer must have the same number of significant figures as this value, three of them. Let's look at light for our next example. We'll learn more about light later in chemistry. For now, all we need to know is that the speed of light is a constant equal to 2.9979 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. How many significant figures are in this value? As we said earlier, the speed of light is a constant of nature. While it's true that we've measured this value using experiments, a lot of them actually, we always will know constants to way more figures than we need in a problem. In that way, constants should never limit our significant figures. Let's see what that means. The speed of light is equal to wavelength, which is denoted by this Greek letter lambda, times frequency, denoted by the Greek letter nu. But again, more on this later. If we want to determine the frequency of light with a wavelength 53.6 nanometers, how many significant figures will our final result include? As we just said, the speed of light is a constant. That means that we do not consider this value when determining the number of significant figures in our final result. Since the only measured value is the wavelength, which is 53.6 nanometers, we only use this value to determine the number of significant figures in our result. Because 53.6 nanometers has three significant figures, so should our result. Let's set our equation equal to frequency and plug in our given values. But be careful. The speed of light is in meters per second and the wavelength is in nanometers, so we have to make sure our units match. Our final result, when taking three significant figures into account, is 5.59 times 10 to the 15th, 1 over second. One word of caution. It is always important to use constants to more precision than the significant figures in the problem. If we had used a rounded version of the constant with fewer figures, like 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, then we would have gotten this answer, 5.60 times 10 to the 15th, 1 over second, an answer that is incorrect to three significant figures. Always keep at least one extra non-significant figure until the very end of your calculations. So constants of nature like the speed of light, the density of water, and the atomic masses of elements are not measured quantities and so will not limit our significant figures. Always use these values to more precision than you need. Similarly, counted objects have no significant figures either. For example, let's say you are walking your two dogs. It is impossible to have 1.7 dogs, so this quantity, two dogs, is an exact number and it is fully precise. After all, we would be pretty shocked to see seven-tenths of a dog being walked. As a result, exact counted numbers do not follow the rules that we've learned either. In other words, only measured quantities obey the rules of significant figures, and constants, conversion factors, and exact numbers are not measured. Let's take a look at an instance where we would have to apply all of the rules we've learned, addition and subtraction, and the rules of multiplication and division, in the same problem. We'll do so by finding the density of this cube. We initially have a beaker with 100 milliliters of water in it. When we place a cube with mass 82.961 grams into the water, the beaker reads 175.47 milliliters. We want to find the density of the cube. How many significant figures will be in the final answer? 
Let's take it one step at a time. If the beaker initially read 100 milliliters and 175.47 milliliters when we place the cube inside of it, what is the volume of the cube to the correct number of significant figures? Because there are no significant figures after the decimal in the original 100 milliliters of water, our answer should not have any decimal places either. That means that the volume of the cube to the correct number of significant figures is 75 milliliters. However, since we're not done with the problem and we want to eliminate any round off errors in our final answer, we'll keep one extra non-significant figure in the volume. So for the next step, we'll use 75.5 milliliters, even though the correct number of significant figures for the subtraction step was two. We'll round at the very end, as we'll see in the next step. Next, we said that the mass of the cube is 82.961 grams. We now have the mass and the volume, which means that we can calculate the density of the cube. To the correct number of significant figures, what is the density of the cube? Because the value with the least number of significant figures is the volume, our final answer must have the same number of significant figures. After we did the subtraction step, we determined that the volume of the cube to the correct number of significant figures was 75 milliliters. Remember, we only use the value 75.5 milliliters to eliminate round off errors. There are two significant figures in this quantity, so our final result is 1.1 grams per milliliter, as this value contains two significant figures. And there we have it. By taking this problem step by step, we were able to express the density of the cube to the correct number of significant figures.